This game contains content that might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewers' discretion is advised. I'll start us off with recalling what I can remember. Today was the day I decided to confess. This is probably a little bit of a dramatic way to start off, huh? What's your name? It's Lion. It was noon. I was at the rooftop waiting while gazing at the light blue sky above. What an average yet classic place to confess to someone. I have feelings for you. So, can you go out with me? The boy stared blankly. His face has gone deathly pale. I could only describe it as if he'd seen a ghost in broad daylight. Okay, if I'm being honest, that ghost he was seeing was me. With you? Yeah. So, what do you mean by go out with you? Um, do you want me to date you? That would be right. Does that mean you're confessing to me? Exactly. After confirming the meaning of my statement over and over again in pure disbelief, he leans against the rooftop railings. His face drops with the same gloomy expression he always seems to be wearing. Those crimson red eyes of his first look towards the sky and tread it towards the ground, never truly meeting with my own. I'm sorry, Hoshino. I didn't mean it to feel forceful. With my eyebrows creased and what appeared to be worry, my mouth awkwardly smiled with a taste of bitterness hidden behind it. To anyone looking upon us from the side, they would assume I truly cherished him and liked him with all my heart. To me, however, it felt like at the moment that he couldn't possibly return my confession. It's practically impossible for a normal person to accept a confession from some horrible person who bullied them every, every day after all. Wait, wait, hang on. So you tell me that I am trying to riz up the person I've been bullying all this time. Do they even have the chance to say no? I mean, heck, I feel like that is the fast lane to get a, like, you know, getting into a relationship, okay? Just bully someone and then, like, ask them out. Don't actually do that, okay? Do not actually try that. It will definitely backfire. Yeah. Oh, jeez. With this kind of silence, it went exactly how I expected. Now, could he just reject me already so I could get this embarrassment over with? I see. After school, we should hang out together then. With his calm and soft tone, you'd expect us to be close enough to be exchanging friendly greetings, such as good morning and good afternoon with each other. The strange thing is, we are by no means on those kinds of friendly terms with one another at the current moment. Wait, what did you just say? Now it's my turn to question my sanity. In just a few moments, the mask which hid my true feelings seemed to shatter in an instant. Oh no, this was a huge mistake. Shouldn't they have told me something along the lines of, I don't want to date you or stop pretending to have feelings for me and then ignore me with that same emotionless expression? To sum up what just happened, we will start with this. I'm Lion, a simple high school student. Today I confessed to the victim of my own bullying. Although I was the one who confessed my feelings, I didn't really expect Hoshino would be able to return them so easily. How troublesome. It was time for school. The light peered in from the window, shedding its ever-radiant light upon the floors of the hallway. Other students surrounding me would joyfully laugh and banter with one another, each telling different random and little stories about themselves brought to mind to the people around them. To me, however, I chatted with someone else. It felt like all we could do is argue about meaningless topics and such. A lion! Lion! Yeah. Gosh, I tried to get your attention several times already, you know? Kinda tired because I had to stay up all night preparing for the exam. Issue is, I can never seem to remember half of what I'm learning, so I thought studying might help a little. Turning his head to look at me while I began talking, the simple minded student merely watched as I finished up my sentence. I suppressed the anger festering inside of me as I maintained my outgoing and welcoming appearance mask, threatening to rip at the seams. I've been really out of it lately. It's not for some mature reason like studying all night. Rather, insomnia always makes me stay awake at night. Not surprising. You are the top student after all. But do be careful to eat a little more. You're losing a lot of weight and start to worry me. Didn't you faint in PE class yesterday? It was this morning too. You lost the bet because you were in such a daze. Also, you're really not gonna confess it a pathetic piece of trash, are you? Yeah! I smiled. Hey, he's a cute piece of trash, okay? Like, don't knock it till you try it. And besides, you know what they say about trash? Trash can. <laughs> oh god, this is the this is the quality comedy you guys came here for. Oh 
God. If my classmates discovered Hoshina and I were dating all of a sudden, it would attract a lot of unwanted attention. Besides, the group of people I hung around were some of the worst kind of people. They were the kind of people who would like to join in on the bullying. If they found out, who knows what might happen. I mean, heck, what if everyone wants to date Hoshino? What What if everyone wants to date Hoshino? Hoshino's mine! Those kinds of people are the most horrible that you can meet. The kind of people who have no shame and doubts about getting up with someone. If those kinds of people figured out our relationship. The kind of rumors they'd spread would spiral out of control. Huh. Tell them the truth about your confession to Hoshino. Deny your confession to Hoshino. Don't say anything. Change the subject. They'll tell them the truth. I don't care. Like, heck. What are you gonna do? Like, attempt to, like, do, pull 180 and bully me? Heck, I'll bully them right back. I'm gonna bully them until they say, No, oh, no, please. No, senpai. Oh, I promise. I, I, I'll be good to you, senpai. Oh, God, no. Oh, oh, tell him the truth about your confession. Yeah, and confess to him. Gasp! If only for a moment, everything went silent. But mere seconds later, shocked and exaggerated shouts came bursting out from my classmates. Surprised? I asked. This kind of reaction was normal, to say the least. People like me and Hoshino seem to be from different worlds entirely. Needless to say, it'd be weird to discover that we became friends. Nonetheless, a couple. You see? You see? Of course! They kept the deal and confess! Lion always keeps that word. This is what I really admire about them. I'm getting praise! What? <laughs> nah, if I try to confess my feelings by that weird freak, I would have just thrown in the towel. It feels impossible. What's more, Lion is such a sweet, gentle, incredible person who apparently bullies the person he's trying to love. Wait, considering my streams. Yeah, th that tracks, that tracks. I can only imagine what it's like to bear such humiliation after doing that. Speaking of which, don't tell me Oshino actually agreed. Who knows? Maybe he's really some sort of deranged masochist who actually believes getting beat equals love or something. <laughs> hey, 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 I mean, like, some people are into it. Don't knock it till you try it, fam. Heck, uh, I could give you a little piece of this painful loving if you like. Ew, gross, just stop talking. It's <laughs> so disgusting, I damn my fault. <laughs> oh my god! I I I I'm betting that soon B's reaction is what you guys are reacting. All right, that that's your exact reaction to whatever I try to raise up the characters. Keyword being try. The exaggerated performance of disgust from soon made the others burst out of laughter. Shortly after, this ended the conversation. After this, there'll probably be more rumors circling the school. However, the target of said rumors won't end up being me. The burden of the brunt of those rumors will end up being Hoshino, and Hoshino alone. Everyone else seems to understand that this confession and such is all just a game to me on my end. To them, they believe my confession to Hoshino bears no difference to saying such things to a small kitten or puppy left abandoned on the side of the road. The conversation on Hoshino was put to rest. No one decided to ask any more questions about it. As if nothing had even happened, they began chatting again about whatever came to mind. Occasionally, they will purposely include me in such conversations. Lion. They are the top student in the entire class, respected by the teachers, great, and practically even the whole school. Really? I'm... I'm smart? Their grades are ranked first. They're incredibly attractive. Also very popular. No matter the gender, they seem to get along well with everyone. At first, it almost seems like fiction, if you will. I was a weak and frail child who spent most of their life growing up within the walls of a hospital room. However, somehow I managed to become the type of model student others can only dream of being. I am that perfect model student, but I must remain so, or at least maintain that image I've been trying so desperate to keep. As for Hoshino, he's the exact opposite of me. To others, he is nothing more than insignificant pests below their very feet. Contrary to popular belief, Hoshino does have his positives. For one, he's quite the smart student. However, this ability falls short as he is too meek and afraid to use it due to the negative environment surrounding him. He's introverted, withdrawn to social contact, and nearly has an anxiety attack every time the teacher calls his name out in front of the class to answer a question. People think he's, he has some sort of mental illness because of his great amount of anxiety. I mean, heck, anxiety is a pretty serious issue. He's only come a handful of days to school. 
At this point, he's bordering the line of suspension. Half of his time in school, he'd either spend reading alone by himself or being bullied by people like me. Wait, wait, does he, does he like, oh wait, no, he's either spending it reading or being bullied. He doesn't particularly like being bullied unless, for example, sometimes we'd throw his textbook out the window. The teacher would then question why he didn't have it while I held back a sinister smirk watching close behind. Whenever I was in a bad mood, I would do things like pull his hair, choke his neck, make him suffer an unbearable pain just to appease myself. The bruises on his body would increase more and more each day that passed by. At some point, less of them were from me and rather from my classmates. Someone even scribbled with black ink on his school uniform, so up till now, he hasn't been wearing his uniform to school. This, in return, forced him to become even more of an outlier among other students. Or at least, something like that. If you look at all things considered, I deserve to be the person to have been said to have a mental illness far more than Hoshino does. All he's done is live a quiet life. He hasn't disturbed or harmed anyone in any sort of way. That's all. Funnily enough, it's about all this. Rather than me being isolated and harassed by everyone else, I ended up being him. This world is truly illogical. It all started with a simple game during recess. People would boo and make the loser of said game perform the most stupid and possible punishments. In the end, I managed to lose. So I said that my punishment will be confessing to Hoshino. During lunchtime, I tried to get him to quickly reject me so I could give the idiots a conclusion and get the stupid thing over with. Who knew that the plan would somehow end up in failure? Why? Why does whenever I encounter Hoshino, nothing ever seems to go right? You know what? Never mind. I shouldn't say encounter. I brought all these trouble onto myself after all. An unnameable anger fueled my heart in with rage. Hoshino asked me to go out with him after school. Actually, now I'm thinking about it, is it really important for me to meet up with him in the first place? Yeah, let's meet up with Hoshino. Why not? See you tomorrow. I'm going to the library. I wave goodbye to my classmates. They gave me a smile as soon as we made plans to meet up and have lunch at noon together in the next day, each person leaving separately as they went in opposite directions. We planned to meet up before he disappeared from the last class. He should be here. Hi! Surely enough, he showed up. Wherever lies any sort of book or album, there also lies Hoshino. He could always be spending his time in a way such as this. Hoshino scribbled upon the pages of his notebook with great force, almost as if rather than holding a pen, he'd been tearing into the pages with a steel knife. His complexion appeared pale as ever, as if his attention was also lacking to the environment surrounding him, hence why he didn't even seem to notice me approaching him. Uh, look at what he's writing. Curiosity may have killed the cat, but it wouldn't be able to kill me. Huh? What in the world is he writing about? A scribble, thy handwriting made the sentences look practically in illegible. I couldn't tell if he had done it on purpose or if it was merely an accident. Barely being discernible, the only thing I could tell about the first part was that it was a rhyming poem. The other part was heavily detailed descriptions about, most likely, his own emotions. It was probably how he expressed himself without needing to tell anyone. As I skimmed the scribbled type of writings brought across the paper, I took notice of the last of the sentence reading, I'm so tired. I tried to take a closer look. Somehow, Hoshino managed to notice me behind him. Maybe he'd hurt me or notice his shadow growing ever so slightly taller in passing moments. Regardless, he slightly shook at noticing me and slowly raised his head towards me in confusion. Our eyes made contact. He was silent and he sat breathless, staring up at me. I too remained silent as I stared down at him. Three, two, one. What was the countdown about? Ah! As I slowly counted my mind, once the number had reached one, Hoshino's voice exploded with shock all across the quiet library. <laughs> as he began to scream, I quickly covered my hands over his mouth to suppress the sound hoping to not draw any more attention than he already had. As I covered his mouth for a few seconds longer, 
I waited as I expected he was going to either do something like bite my hand or stab it with his pen. He did seem terrified, after all, at the moment. However, he instead decided to try and restrain himself from pulling self-defense techniques on me. In the end, he didn't end up hurting me in the slightest, contrary to what I was thinking was going to happen. I frowned after his screaming had finished. You can't make such a ruckus in the library. But Shino's eyes seemed to tremble with panic as he stared at me. They seemed to be trying to convey to me, is that really the problem here? His cheeks flushed a cherry red almost instantly as he stumbled awkwardly out of his seat. He tried to get up as soon as possible but ended up tripping several times in the process. Now, just stay still and try to breathe. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Please, just be calm. I tried to emphasize the word please, however, it ended up sounding more like a command than reassurance. Is he into it? Well, is he? I waited for a little while until he had decided to settle down. At last, he had finally calmed himself. At least on the outside, that is. Do you feel better now? I asked. Oshino chuckled slightly in a gloomy way as I continued to move my hands away from his face. As my touch left his cheeks, his body began to tremble once more. Lion, you please don't surprise me like that next time, he said while gritting his teeth. However, the expression was not akin to anger or blame, but rather a sense of fear. I understand why Hoshino was so anxious. Something similar to this happened once. Hoshino was so frightened by me, he nearly stabbed the tip of his pen into my eye out of shock and terror. Perhaps he was afraid he would accidentally do it again. You could have been in danger if you had- I don't know what I would have done. If I ever hurt you, I- Uh, come on a little strong, fam! Hoshino lowered his head, lower lip trembling. He continued to murmur something under his breath. It was difficult for me to distinguish what he was saying. Uh, promise not to do that to him again. Pat his head and try to comfort him. Don't say anything. Punch. <laughs> okay, I'll promise not to do that to him again. Okay, okay. Promise you. I won't try to do that ever suddenly to scare you like that again. I'll make this promise to him. Perhaps I'll keep it. Perhaps not. Depends on how I'm feeling. Lion, will you really keep to your word? Yes. Then Pinky promised me. You're being childish. As I yelled out this in frustration, I didn't really think about the volume of my own voice aloud in public. As a result, the librarian sauntered over to us, unable to bear the noise we had been making. She grabbed us both by the shoulders with a grim expression on her face. If Oshino hadn't immediately grabbed my wrist after that, I might have been the first student in school history to have been pushed to the ground by a teacher. I'm really sorry, miss. I bowed to the teacher to show the depth of my apology. I usually would make stupid mistakes such as this. I blame Hoshino. This dumb mess is all his fault! Isn't Hoshino going to apologize too? Rather than doing anything about it, Hoshino simply kept his gaze trapped to the side, preferring to remain quiet and cling to me instead. Hoshino... You have to apologize too, you know. Once I reminded him of this, he did listen and end up apologizing, but he didn't truly put that much focus or meaning into it. It was almost as if he had just woken up from a dream. He looked at me as if I was the one in a trance. It seems this guy will only acknowledge my existence in this world. This is probably why he doesn't have many other friends. Only the times where the two of us were alone together was he able to speak more fluently become relaxed and allow himself to be comfortable with physical contact with one another. What in the world? This guy should hate me, not feel comforted by me. Sometimes I feel like he really is crazy. Lion. We should go. Um, since this is a date, we should find a place together where we can make long-lasting memories. Our time together is precious after all. Oshino says in a strangely serious tone. He tugs at the edge of my sleeves as he heads towards the exit. He does have a point. Wandering around the school for a few hours wasn't the most interesting thing in the world. The only question is, where does Hoshino plan on going? He patiently waits for me to join him as we begin to walk out of the library. I wonder where we're going. Cafe, maybe. It's quite a popular day location, after all. You can't go wrong with that sort of choice. Or maybe not. Maybe we're going to the park. 
It's a nice and quiet place to spend time to be outdoors. It's great for relaxing too, especially when the weather is warm enough. Huh, no, that doesn't seem like it's the place either. Nothing I can think of feels like it's going to be the right one. I admit, I can't think of any places besides those. However, uh, do you want to come over to my house? Oshino plainly made the suggestion. What? Uh, well, I was just thinking. You haven't been there in over a year, Lion. The house and my family has changed a little, and I thought you might be curious. So, uh, do you... Before he could finish his sentence, I reached out and ruffled the soft tufts of Oshino's hair. Despite his kitten being covered, every scratch mark has still not been healed. Each wound still remains scarred, revealed before my very eyes. <laughs> how careless. As long as he stays here, that always remains the same, no matter how much he changes over time. Oh, and when I say he, I mean Oshino's uncle. Oshino's been horrified of him ever since he was just a little kid. Not sure why. At least when he was a child, that is. For me, I can remember the place being almost like a second home to me at some point. Before he was 10 years old, Shino was just a normal boy living a happy life. He had a stable and wealthy family, most of the money and house of which had been inherited by their ancestors. Oshino's parents had actually passed away fairly early on, but despite this, he still had a happy childhood. He was raised mainly by his uncle, along with his aunt, almost as if he was their own son. He was highly loved and cared for. I've seen the him and his uncle together. His uncle wasn't the greatest with words, but I could tell how much he cared about him. His uncle and aunt were very kind people. The first day I met Hoshino, unlike now, had nothing to do with work blooming. To this day, I can still remember what it was like at the time. He was a gentle child with the brightest smile. He shined like the stars. Did you guess it? Yeah. It's strange compared to what he's like now. But how did he turn out this way? His uncle in a bad mental state, was introduced to a strange church by some shady people he'd known at the time. To put it simply, he'd been brought into a cult. Depressingly, this cult didn't just preach words about their beliefs. They were more harmful than that. The family seems to crumble apart after this, a number being done on their financial state along with it. The cult would give drugs to cure their members of sin, or rather, to more easily keep them as devoted followers. After that, it only took two months to take what was once a loving husband and turn him into a madman, someone who craved the medicine the cult would provide. However, luckily, it seemed his uncle had snapped out of this. Despite that, however, the couple had decided to divorce as they were too troubled by what had happened and Hoshino was soon taken away to live with his aunt. His aunt and uncle both went on to live in separate parts of the city to start a new life. However, what Hoshino and his aunt didn't know was that while this happened, his uncle had been dragged into the cult once more, and this time they had a plan. It was truly a pity what happened to his aunt. The crazy man of the cult had stormed up at their door that day. Hoshino's uncle was there too. He'd attacked his ex-wife while the men of the cult yelled in horror about how they'd been forced to kill their own wives. I'd rather not mention what happened after that. Why do I say this like a side? It's because I did. I was with Hoshino during that day. If I hadn't grabbed Hoshino, who at the time was sobbing and desperately trying to inch towards his aunt and uncle, I'm not sure we would have been able to run away in time and call the police. If we'd stay there any longer, that idiot would have ended up in a situation just as bad as his uncle. Afterwards, the men of the cult had become even more deranged after what happened. Along with the tradition of becoming self-harmful, they were later sent to get medical treatment because of it. Luckily, the property had still remained intact. There, Hoshino lived alone with only the savings left behind from his dead parents. I was the only one left in his life. Since then, he distanced himself from other people. His cheerful personality had been burned to dust. From then on, he decided to rely on me and me alone. Regardless of what happened, after a few years, the man who committed an unforgivable sin had been released from prison. When he arrived home, it seemed that he'd begun to abuse Hoshino. What the hell? Lion! Lion! That's when I realized how deeply my mind had wandered. It took me a second to snap out of it as I'd been so lost in thought. You know, I like to imagine that every single time that a 
protagonist actually goes into like a flashback. They're, they 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 just like go blank face and just like, and everyone else around them is just wondering what is up with them. <laughs> oh lord. However, I was taken back when my awareness returned to me. When did Hoshino get so close? I stumbled back a few steps, but he reacted quickly as he grabbed my wrist. His expression was serious. Lion! You okay? Not feeling well. There's benches over there. You can sit down and rest. I can take care of you. I gasped as I was taken out of my thoughts. I ignored his ramblings and concerns, rather focused on what I would answer to the question he asked earlier. I'll agree. Why not? As we walked onward, Oshino followed me like a stray puppy with big worried eyes. He gently grabbed onto the sleeve of my uniform, hesitantly grasping the edge. Despite this, he also seemed reluctant to let go, like he still wanted to be near me, but didn't want to force me to make any contact if I didn't feel comfortable. His stare rested in the distance, more at peace than before. I'll stay like this? Eh, whatever. He can do what he wants. I don't really care. I guess if this is good enough for him, then it's good enough for me. Lion, do you remember? It's the place where we first met. Oshino's eyes gazed far off into the setting sun. A warm light swarmed inside them. I'll agree. I gave him a nod, along with a slight smile. Yeah, of course I remember. Oshino seemed happy to hear that. It's hard to forget an experience when you nearly died from it. One summer night, I ran away from home. I was still in elementary school at the time. Now don't get me wrong here. It wasn't because of any rebellious phase I was going through, nor was it because I didn't want to finish my homework. Something happened that night, back at home. I was so horrified that I ran away. I remember thinking to myself, just run anywhere, as long as it's not home. And so, I found myself stumbling, running in the middle of the road. Slowly, my thoughts began to disappear. Only one goal was left in mind. However, as I began to run out of breath, I found myself fainter on the side of the road. I don't know how long I was out there, how long I'd been running for. Looking back on it, I was lucky I hadn't been kidnapped or anything. I remember the first thing I saw when I woke up was a starry night sky. It was so enchanting that I almost didn't feel real. However, the second thing I saw was... Strange looking boy. Hoshino, I'm guessing. I can still remember it. The first thing you said to me was, I'm sorry. I'm still unsure of who you were really apologizing to, but please, don't ever make such a sad expression like that ever again. Don't worry. I won't make you tell me who it was. I just want to let you know. Seeing Hoshino's warm smile, my heart begins to thump. Hoshino. Yeah, he's the one who saved my life that day. He was just on the walk at the time, but if he hadn't found me there, still and unconscious, I'm afraid I would have died that day. Yeah, if he hadn't found me, I probably would have died at a very young age. My mother almost certainly wouldn't have looked out for me. She had other matters to deal with that night. That leaves only Hoshino able to save me. That's exactly what he did. And I bullied him? I remember... I took your hand and you followed me home as I looked for my aunt. She seemed startled. Auntie saw you looking down, refusing to speak as you wiped away your tears. I think she thought I might have been bullying you. That wouldn't be too shocking. She did take away that telescope of yours for a week. Lion, can you only remember the embarrassing memories of me? <laughs> There's no way I can forget that. I shrugged my shoulders with a knowing smirk as I replied. Yeah, but I can, I can also remember something else. Lion, there was also that picture of us holding hands with each other as children at the time. Gosh, you looked so cute. Ah! Forget about it, stupid picture! I don't think I can. I'll treasure it for the rest of my life. There's no way I can forget that. Hoshino chuckled as he repeated back to me what I told him. I guess this is supposed to be my consequence. A bright yet plain three-story house sits not far away, a garden littered with pansies, lying in the very front. Pansies are Hoshino's aunt's favorite kind of flowers. In memory of the kind-hearted lady, 
Hoshino has taken very good care of them for her. Even after all this time, nothing has seemed to have changed. Aren't you worried that your uncle will come back while we're here? Hoshino gave a noncommittal shrug as he took a key out of his pocket, soon unlocking the front door. As the two of us walked inside, the door shut slowly behind us. Lion, you can go take a seat. I'll go make some tea for you. I nod as I find a place to sit down. As I look around the house, I find it's completely clean. It was almost as if I'd been staying in a hotel. It was so clean, in fact, that something nearly felt wrong. It didn't look like a house someone was living in, much less two people were living in it. I hold my forehead in thought, almost murmuring the question under my breath. So, this is supposed to be a date, right? What even should I talk to him about? What are we even going to do? Hoshino and I are fairly familiar with each other. We have never really been separated. Not in the past, not now. Even on the days Hoshino didn't go to school, we still wind up meeting somehow. It wasn't like there's something I didn't know about Hoshino. It's not like there weren't plenty of things I could talk to him about. After all, no one knows Hoshino better than I do. Although at first glance, he does seem like a bit of a weirdo. But in reality, he's just a simple and oblivious, yet kind idiot. I probably shouldn't be thinking so hard about what to say to him. We could just figure this out, step at a time. I just hope this doesn't turn out too badly. My phone began ringing. My mother's calling me. I ignored it. After waiting for a while, Hoshino came setting down tea and snacks at the table. It's probably easy to guess what kind of food Hoshino likes. He's always loved sweet foods. And the drinks that's placed in front of me tastes, uh... Well, tastes normal. You didn't put any sort of medicine in this, did you? I asked. No, if you added medicine, it wouldn't taste good. Huh, I see what he's saying, but... But if it doesn't affect the taste, then would it be added? It was hard to know, but for now, I put my doubts aside. It tasted pretty good. Oshino seems to know what I like to drink. Hoshino's cooking skills are really good too. Those fluffy snacks he put out looked delicious. If only I had good appetite a moment, I don't think I was able to take a single bite. Heh! <laughs> Hoshino seems confused as to why I'm not eating. For the rest of the time, we simply spent it peacefully talking about little things. It's getting dark. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's not too hot at this time. Or no, that's not what I meant. I mean, it's a great time to do something like that. You mean stargazing? Stargazing, right? Stargazing. Oh, oh, stargazing. Yeah, yeah, stargazing. Yes, yes, stargazing. That, that is what that is. The great thing to do at night. Yes, stargazing. Stargazing. Yeah. Would you like to stargaze with me? Ew. <laughs> God, no. No. <sighs> it sounds like something you would want to do. Yeah. They did say it might rain tonight, so it might not turn out too well. Eh, who cares? What should we... What should we need to do to get ready? Lion, can you help me move my telescope from the attic? I'll be getting some flashlights, cameras, blankets, and some other stuff to bring. And I'd also like to bring snacks. I agreed and went straight to the attic on the third floor. Hmm. Huh. It's really dark up here. I guess I'll turn on my phone light then. I can barely see Hoshino's telescope next to the old wardrobe in the attic. As I approached the attic, I swore I could hear something. If this were a cartoon, a big question mark would be appearing over my head right now. You mean, you mean like this? Eh. Maybe I'm just imagining it. There's a knock coming from inside the wardrobe. Hmm? What the? What? It hurts! It hurts! It hurts! I've been bashing the head. My neck feels like it was about to be snapped in half. It was being twisted and clutched by the figure before me. Their face was obscured by a sack. The coughing sounded like it was coming from a man. His voice had a rough and deep edge. What the? Why is there a man locked inside Hoshino's wardrobe? Hoshino! Hoshino! Why is there a man in the wardrobe? Hoshino! God! What the hell is going on here? I can't breathe! Does Hoshino know about all this? The man who attacked me soon dropped to the ground. He began choking as the blood spewed from his mouth. 
And there, Hoshino stood, in one hand a flashlight, the other a bloodstained crowbar. As he stepped forward, he stomped down on the man's head. I swore I could hear a loud crack coming from his skull. The scene was soon imprinted in my mind, becoming a memory I could never soon forget. I never would have imagined that pure and kind Hoshino could turn into such a monster. It was as if the cute little puppy had suddenly turned into a vicious beast hunting for blood. Uh, it's annoying. It's none of your business. It's exciting. What does this mean? It's exciting? I can't help but feel excited. It's that same sort of excitement you feel when you see the bud of a flower grow into a full blossom. All of a sudden, the dizziness rushes back to me. I sat up from the ground, but I twisted with saw limbs. That's when I realized the man's legs were missing. Ugh, no wonder he hadn't run away by now. It seems that would have been impossible. What a nuisance. Who's gonna leave your life for Lion? Shouldn't you be more grateful? After all, I didn't want to make Lion worried. If Lion had seen me gone for so long, having to deal with you, then they'd get concerned. That's why I still needed you alive. Now, I guess there's no use for you anymore. The man struggled and squirmed, helplessly lying on the ground. His head was soon cracked into a dozen of pieces, smashed in just a few kicks. It's not the first time I'd seen someone die. Why does it seem to always happen around me? Hoshino took off his coat, soon laying it over the corpse in disgust. Then he turned to face me, the flashlight in hand. But I still pretend like I hadn't seen anything. Was it too late to act like I had fainted? It seemed that all I could do was stare at Hoshino. My mouth held agape. Lion, you okay? Does it hurt anywhere? The boy rested his hand on my shoulder, his eyes wide in worry. Maybe I would have been touched by this had I been able to ignore the blood-soaked body. I pushed Hoshino with all my strength, knocking him to the floor. He wouldn't fight against me. I didn't need to worry. Hoshino looked at me in surprise. It was like the world had fallen silent. Not a single word came out of his mouth. I could feel it. He wanted me to explain to him. He wanted to know why. Lion, what are you going to do? Oh, you know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, what was I going to do? Uh, ask him? Hoshino. What do you want me to do? You want me to call the police? Do you want to kill me? Then continue to kill others as well. Do you want me to be your accomplice? What am I supposed to do, Hoshino? Pathetic. So pathetic. How useless. Lion. Lion. Lion! I just... I just want to be with you. Please. Don't give up on me now. Don't leave me behind. You're the only one I have left! Only you, lion! So... Shino's hands clutched onto my clothes. He began to tremble, his body shaking like a leaf. It seemed like I had become the meaning of his existence. Really? I see. I guess I have to take responsibility then. Because I'm the one to blame. I made Hoshino into a monster. I turned him into this crushed soul. Someone who had no one else to turn to. Not even his own family. No matter what I do, I'll only continue to hurt Hoshino. In the past, I'd simply shoved the blame onto him. I made him pay for my own actions. All while making sure he suffered from as well. I gently brought my hand towards him. Resting it upon his shoulder made sure to remind him of this. I was the only one on this planet who could love him. I cherished him more than anyone else in this world. He needs to rely on me. To trust me, it will be the only thing that could keep him sane. He needs to make me feel happy. He needs to be with me. If he dared to turn his back on me, he'd remember that his existence would no longer have meaning. And finally, I told him that people like him deserve to die. After all the hard work, 
finally paid off. I was able to get that special someone. That special someone who couldn't live without me. I won't let him go so easily. Don't cry, Hoshino. I watched as Hoshino began rubbing hard at his face, desperately trying to wipe off the tears. Okay. Yeah. No. I'm sorry. Lion. I can't stop. I can't stop it. I was born with an uncontrollable anger. Most of the time I can control it. At least when I need to, that is. When I'm with Hoshino, only then will my true emotions be revealed. It only worsens at such an annoying situation such as this. Stop crying, will ya? Please forgive me, I... Hoshino, can't you see? I like you. But that was my second confession that day. Only difference was, this time, it was real. God, this was so embarrassing. I wish I could die. But, but how? Wait, no. Why? Shino's reaction was almost as if he just heard me speaking some foreign language. He was completely confused. As long as you don't bore me. If you look at me, only me, if you promise to love me, then I promise to treat you well too, okay? I'll make sure you're happy. I'll treat you better than anyone else. Yeah! Koshino was stunned at my words. I'll be honest, I was too. I didn't even know what I was talking about. I didn't understand what I was saying. I'd probably end up regretting this. After all, did I really want to be involved with someone like Koshino? If I did, absolutely nothing good would come out of it. Nothing would go well. Damn it. What am I even doing? I set up quicker than I ever had before. Lion. Lion, wait, don't go! What about what you told me? Do you really mean it? Yeah, I do. But wait, you shouldn't leave. Don't, don't. Don't you want to see the stars tonight? God, what a fool. Is he even thinking about what's happening right now? It seems only the thought of the stars can run through his head. What an idiot. I turned my back to him. I'm leaving. See you tomorrow. Ignoring the body, which still lay on the ground, I quickly shout out a small goodbye as I rushed down the stairs. As if I was escaping, I hurriedly made my way home. Yeah, that's right. Idiots. Losers. All you cowards, just like Hoshino. Not a few will be able to catch up to me. But maybe, just maybe, Hoshino and I really could have a new beginning. What? Anyway, that's all for this episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. Um, there are about six endings to this game, okay? And I know I'm supposed to play through, like, the entirety of the game, like, get all the endings for this. And if you guys do want to see that, uh, let me know in the comments below. And heck, uh, if this video reaches about 2k views, I mean, heck, I might actually come back to it. But anyway, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.